Order. Uh, roll call, please. Can, Mark, you yeah. said me first? Yeah. Present. Woken? Here. Young? Here. Ingram? Here. Vector? Here. Summers? Here. Taylor? Harper? Here. We have a quorum present. Uh, approval of minutes from January 7th. Moved by Rector, seconded by Mr. Tinsley. Any discussion on that? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Any public participation? Oh, I did the agenda. Oh, she. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, thank you, Charles. Yeah. I'm older than you, so that's all right. Uh, now we'll go to the, that was the agenda. Now the minutes. <laughs> motion for that. Mr. Summers makes the motion. Second by Mr. Young. Any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Now we'll go to public participation. Anybody out there need to speak to us right now? Seeing none, any communications from the uh, committee? All right, we'll move into new business, and I'll turn this over to Dana. Uh, thank you. Thanks for being here this evening. Uh, approval of contract for ITB 2020-002. It's a courthouse and JDC video security system. Uh, this is a replacement project. Uh, this has kind of been ongoing for a while. We identified uh, some severe issues, uh, uh, discrepancies uh, within our uh, current systems that are quite aged at both JDC and uh, the courthouse. Um, several incidents had occurred that we had did not or were not able to get video uh, on uh, to reference for um, both the courts and police. Um, so we've been looking at it over the last uh, year, basically. Had a bid go out, and we opened up bids on the 30th. We've got Lucas McGill here from GHR, uh, who uh, basically led our team putting our documentation together, uh, was in contact with, uh, with vendors. Lucas, you want to step up to the table and uh, just take us through a little bit? Yep, right there. Got to use the mic, if you don't mind, please. So Dana reached out to my company a couple months ago to put together bid drawings and specs for this project. Um, we understood there to be video surveillance issues as well as <clears throat> ongoing issues with their detention control system at both the JDC and the courthouse. Two kind of separate systems that are integrated together. Um, so GHR, my company, began um, meeting with Dana and his staff and the sergeant at the courthouse and Keith and his staff at JDC to understand what those issues were. Um, we walked the facility many times. Um, we identified blind spots in camera coverage, um, worked with various manufacturers of these systems to develop this open-ended, um, competitive apples-to-apples -apples bid spec and associated drawings. Um, th this work is very unique in its nature, especially the detention control component. Um, there's probably no one in Champaign who really can do it from top to bottom. So we were really looking at Chicago, Indianapolis, uh, Peoria, um, and really the biggest challenge here was to drum up interest in the project. Uh, the facilities are currently served by Hanley Systems. They're out of Chicago. They're a worldwide company. Uh, they have a, a, what we call a non-proprietary system, one that, that really locks you in with a certain manufacturer for service. We understood service was an issue with this company. Um, it's kind of the na their nature sometimes is to get in the door and then lock you into these long, expensive service contracts. So, so the new design, we were looking at what we call non-proprietary solutions. We ended up 
drumming up four bidders, which is a good number for, for um, the, this really kind of niche market. Uh, on bid day, unfortunately, we only ended up with two bidders. One, one dropped out at the last minute for, you know, and all of the reasons I don't know, but they had their reasons. We could get into that if you'd like. Um, so we ended up with two bids. Prices were a little further apart than what you'd like. Um, GHR provided our opinion of probable cost to Dana throughout the design, really at two stages. One really, really early on when we kind of got a high level understanding of the problem and then one significantly deeper into design. The, the bids came back uh, one higher, I believe, and one lower than our estimate. So our estimate was kind of right there in the middle. I, I followed up with, with all the bidders including the one who dropped out at the last m moment and um, had detailed conversation with the low bidder, who, whom I believe has a responsive bid. Um, I, I provided Dana a letter recommending that he award the bid to Johnson Controls, very large, reputable company that does a lot of different things. Um, I think they have a good grasp on the project and, and they'll be able to provide good service and I think they just really sharpened their pencils and put together a good price is my opinion and got good prices from their subcontractors because they were really interested in this project so that's my thoughts on the matter if you're here to answer any questions or concerns the uh, a bid summary was attached to the uh, material that was sent out that should have received uh, showing Johnson Controls, their bid. It's broken out. Uh, we broke it out because we, we wanted the best possible bids uh, for both of us in terms of JDC and, and the courthouse. So by breaking it out or listing it uh, a composite, um, we're assured to get the best pricing. If one v vendor would have come in lower uh, at the courthouse, we could have broken it up and gone with, the, with different uh, uh, vendors. It really doesn't matter building to building, um, but we're looking for the best price. Uh, JDC is uh, funding this uh, through their capital, um, and uh, uh, on my understanding, they have the funding in place to be able to pay for that. Uh, 476000 for for uh, the courthouse, uh, higher than we anticipated. Uh, we're using uh, court construction funds, about 235000 uh, of that. And then the remainder is going to come from um, capital asset funds uh, that we use uh, over here uh, to make up the difference. So um, met with Tammy on that today. We'll get that going. Um, I'm in agreement with, uh, with GHR and Lucas that we should move forward. We weren't excited that we only received two bids. We, we really thought we had three because uh, Siemens, Simons, um, actually sent in and delivered their uh, bond security uh, fund the morning of the the opening. So we really anticipated uh, having three. So they decided basically at the very 11th hour, if you will, um, right before the opening not to submit their bid. Any questions? Hearing none, I'll turn it back to. Thank you. All right, uh, if there's no other further discussion, is there a motion to approve such bid? Mr. Summers, seconded by Mr. Tinsley. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, we'll move on to uh, Metcat HVC. Okay. Um, that was approved uh, last month by uh, this body as well as uh, the full board. Uh, we have moved forward uh, with getting a con contract put in place. Uh, county executive has signed off on it, and uh, it's being given to GHR uh, to deliver to the uh, vendor. It's uh, the vendors here local in town, uh, United Mechanical. Uh, so we look forward to working with them. Uh, once they sign it and uh, you know, we exchange the copies, we'll get a, 
a meeting scheduled um, where all parties will uh, will be present. Metcat obviously has a, a vested interest in uh, this project at their building and what it will do to um, hamper uh, their ability. They fortunately have an offsite location that they can back up to uh, in Southwest Champaign. Uh, EMA um, has not had a backup facility. However, what I'm led to believe is that there's an agreement uh, being formalized with University of Illinois to uh, use the uh, Fire Institute uh, training as a backup location. Um, we will obviously have spring coming around the corner, which you know means bad weather that we'll have to be uh, careful of. We'll know more once we get the contractor in for a meeting and actually formalize a, a schedule. Um, and then we'll be able to communicate that obviously to, to all parties. So that's my update on, uh, on the HVAC project at Metcad. Any questions for Dane on that? Well, if not, we'll move on to item C, discussion of satellite jail consolidation. And uh, we're just going to be talking about it. We have Sheriff Harmon and Captain Bogus here to help us along. So uh, I might well. note that we've handed out some material. Um, there is a long sheet of paper in front of you that uh, we talked about some time ago. It's been updated, and it basically gives uh, four decision points and uh, costs associated with those decision points. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, passed out a couple of uh, different and larger printed uh, maps of, uh, of the study that was uh, presented by Reefstack Reed. So we've got the really large one, which very easy to read, and then there's uh, one on uh, like 11 by uh, 17 sheet. Um, so I want to make sure you have, if anybody needs another copy of the study, uh, as it was presented back in September, I've got copies here as well. Stan and I spoke last week prior to my email to committee members about the need to come up with a proposal. There's been a lot of discussion in the community about $47 million jail as though the reef stack study is exactly what the county board is interested in moving forward with. Everyone at this table knows that that is not the case. We've not voted or picked any plan to move forward with, but we are rapidly running out of time, which was the reason I sent the email to committee members saying to take some time, look at the reef stick plan, look at the most recent letter laying out different options that our sheriff presented us with. Um, since I made the request, I, it's only fair that I get to go first then. So. Um, the jail is a multifaceted problem for Champaign County. It's not just the physical facility, but we are the facility committee, so I've pretty much restricted any comments to make tonight to the physical facility that we're dealing with. Um, I believe it is very important to close the downtown jail. Um, in looking at both our sheriff's letter and the Reefstick study, the approach that I chose was to eliminate one of the two pods for general population. That was actually one of the alternatives that our sheriff had put forward that would reduce uh, this scope of this proposal by 54 beds. With the reduction that had already been built into this study of 12 beds, that would reduce the overall capacity for Champaign County Corrections to house any inmates down by slightly over 22%, which I think is a significant number. That does bring us below the floor that our sheriff had originally put 
forward as what he viewed as being standards compliant. Um, well, I'm not really comfortable contradicting our sheriff. I'm hopeful that there will be some intervening variables between decision to move forward with this and actual construction that could help us in terms of keeping the numbers down. Um, the pretrial reform legislation that should be moving forward has the possibility of reducing further the number of people that would need to be incarcerated for lower level crimes in Champaign County. Of course, that is, at this point, simply legislation pending. We don't really know how that's going to affect our population here. Um, I'm also hopeful that between the county, uh, between our state's attorney and between our new chief judge, we can make progress on pretrial diversion and, and further reduce what our population would be by intercepting some folks before they would be put directly into the system. Um, I think there are other areas in this that can be cut, but as I was talking with Dana, I was not willing to simply look at the blueprints and try and decide in my head what was necessary and what was not necessary. But I would certainly want to have further discussions with both our sheriff and maybe with the RESTEC group in terms of looking at areas that we could pare down and maybe have some small reductions in cost. One that I pulled out randomly was the, uh, the public lobby is almost a half a million dollars. If we can save a quarter of a million dollars and make it smaller and not affect programmatically what we want to do, um, I would certainly entertain making changes like that. I don't want to be taking a knife to the proposal because I think things were placed there for a reason. And I'm not interested in random uh, blacking out of different areas of this project. Um, Anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing what other folks have to, have to say. If you still have a uh, need for more time, um, please let us know what you have now and come back and talk with Stan and I, and we'll try and put together something, hopefully within a month, where we can go to the Champaign County, go to our full board and say this is the proposal that we're looking at. Anyway, thank you. Um, just kind of echoing some of the things that Steve said. Um, I don't, I mean, I would like to <clears throat> not cut too much on, I mean, it's some of the things that are there are obviously there for a reason, but what I would like to see is, I mean, I, like like you put here in the restick report that you had three, that there, there's three main priorities, being like the 34-bed housing pile for special needs, 54-bed housing pile for male and female general population, and then the 54-bed housing pile for the male general population. If there's like any way we could get, uh, an actual number on what those would cost. Like, you know, I mean, it's one thing for me to see, like, the package deal, but there's no, like, I, I would like to see it, like, line item for line item. You know, that I think that would help us all in, like, kind of estimating where we can save money at. Um, because, yeah, I mean, I see this as a priority, but I don't necessarily know how much this one pod by itself would cost. You know, and I think that's something I would like to see. Make a quick comment on that. Um, we can do our best uh, working with Reesdeck, uh, Reed. Remember that this is a study that we don't know all of the details because the building has not been fleshed out, which would happen through the course of, uh, if you're moving this forward, uh, a study is not going to give you all the information. So we can certainly estimate, which I think that they can do, but to be you know line item by line item, to me is asking for, you know, specific numbers, what it's going to cost to build at that time. We just, you know, I just want to remind everybody that that's not possible and until you sign some contracts with uh, architects and engineers and, and move forward uh, planning the building. So just for process here is the thought that we're going to endorse a concept and then finance and then the board or what's what's the thinking here just on process I mean I'm we got to do something there's no question I just I didn't know what 
you and Stan have talked about as far as process? <laughs> well, I, I think, John, uh, Steve and I, I mean, we've kicked this around and around and around. we got to uh, have something from this committee, present it to the board, and then let's see what the board says. Uh, I know Jody and I went to the uh, uh, conf or the meeting over at uh, the Champaign City Building, and there's going to be a lot of negative whatever we do. Uh, but we did talk on the way back from that meeting that, uh, you know, $47 million is probably not going to fly. I mean, in the rural area, they're, they're not going to pay that much more tax. If we can pare this down and meet the standards and requirements of the day's jail system, I mean, that's why this downtown, it just doing nothing is going to cost us more. And we've discussed that. Um, I, I guess I'd like to ask the sheriff, I mean, if we eliminate one whole pod, is that too much? Or can one of the 54 pods be made into 65? And I, I you know, I, I need to know where you think you're at. Well, thank you for having me here tonight. Um, those four options that I listed in the memo, and it's a lengthy memo because most of us have verbally talked about all of these things, but we never did put it down in writing, right? And so I wanted to make sure when we're making this decision that that we know not only what I think four options are for the board to consider, um, but also what the ramifications of those options might be too, because unless we invest in the entire package, we're not going to get everything that, that we've spent years and years and years developing, right? Which absolutely could be fine for what we need. But I just want to make sure that everybody's clear that something has to be cut somewhere, right? And so we're going to start at the foundation and we're not going to get all the bells and whistles or we're not going to get all the programs or we're not going to get all, all of the things that we want if we start cutting things. So th that'll be a priority for, uh, for you guys. Um, and, and these four options are not all-inclusive. These are four options that I thought were the best options for you guys to consider. Um, is 54, um, is eliminating a pot of 54 going to be sufficient? I have no idea. Um, we don't know where this pretrial legislation is going to go. Um, we don't know. I am pretty adamant looking at the offenses that people are accused of being in the jail, that it's not going to significantly reduce my population under 100. Um, I am almost heartedly full. Uh, I know that's not going to happen. How many will it, though? We, I don't think anybody in here can answer, and, and there are some in the community that say we know how much it's going to reduce, but the legislation is not out there yet, and it has not been approved. We really don't know. Um, so we could be okay with, 50, with, with eliminating 54, right? I think we would need to increase some special management housing then. Right now, in the, in the, uh, in the plan that you have, I think it's a 34-pod special management housing. We might need to increase that by a few beds if we're going to eliminate a 54-bed pod. I think it is possible as long as the county board realizes, you know, in that memo I quoted, taking an average of $100 a day per inmate, and we had an average of 47 inmates in the downtown jail every day last year, that's about $1.7 million. If we had to house all of them outside of the county. Um, and so we, we may have five of them. You know, if our population is up, generally it's up during the, uh, during the summer, a little bit more than it's up during the winter. Um, if we have more than what we can hold, as long as the county board realizes that we're gonna have to house them somewhere else, um, and we're going to have to transport, and then we're going to have attorneys complaining because they can't visit with their, with their clients as, as often, and we're going to have families complaining because they can't visit as often, et cetera. Um, my goal with this is to let you all know these are, these are the things we are looking at with this jail consolidation plan. Um, I, have, I have no vested stake in do we, do we build this great facility, do we not do anything? Honestly, it makes my life better and the captain's life better if we have no inmates whatsoever at all. That is not the, real, the reality we are living in, right? And so, as I mentioned in that memo, we have to make sure that we are advocating for our current facilities and the inmates that we currently have while working behind the scenes on pretrial and those types, which we are absolutely doing. Um, so that was kind of the intent here. I don't, Stan, I don't know the answer. Um, but, you know, but it seems like a lot of people are stuck on that number of, of beds. Um, if that is the only thing that gets this thing passed and gets us where we need, I think it's possible. We, we can do the best we can without that number of, uh, of uh, beds. Okay. I, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. 
I don't know what it cost. I mean, we'd have to get that number, but you know, I want to make sure it's right. Uh, I know a couple of years ago, Captain Vogus and the previous sheriff, you know, they contacted seven counties. I think Carrie you said uh, to see about housing out of this county. Only two of them responded, and they would only take a certain type of criminal. So I mean, we keep saying, "Well, we'll ship them out of the county." Well, you know, they're not all going to take them. And uh, so I, I, I just want to—I want if we're going to do this, do it right. <clears throat> Build it, I've, I've said from the time we said this four or five years ago, build it with the ability to expand if we'd ever have to do. I think it's going to make it so much more efficient to be in one building uh, for your staff and everybody else involved. Uh, but uh, I'm open to listen to things. If we can eliminate a pod, uh, maybe reduce the cost. And what was it, the lobby area you were talking about, Steve? That was just one bit that I randomly right. pulled out. Yeah. But I, I'm uh, sure if there were further discussions with the sheriff and with the architectural firm, we could probably find some areas where we could have some cost savings. But I wasn't willing to just try and guess without talking with people. Because the, the, the items are in there for a reason, and it's, it's not really clearly laid out there. So, right. But I think it's important that we look programmatically at what we want to do. I think that's a big piece of this. And the... The dollar figure is something to look at, but, and here, here I'm digressing from the facilities part, but I know a lot of folks in my district are concerned about other areas in the jail as far as classrooms or the ability to have inmate training, uh, adequate space for family visitation, um, improved medical facilities. Those are things that I think I can sell to people in my district, even if the cost for the whole project is going to be slightly higher. I think the sticking point for a lot of folks in my district are going to be the number of beds and the impact on folks in the community. That's what they're going to look at. So I, I do want to pare this down some for several reasons. But you know <clears throat> the the full plan was if you was two hundred and eighty three beds down from the two ninety five we first between the two facilities, so I'm just sitting there with my uh math that, that take a fifty four pod down that takes us to two twenty nine I mean our numbers have been below two hundred so but it's where they're at right find looking at this right. So we always have to consider what the what the philosophy of the judges is, are going to be too. You know, they they tell me, sheriff, you house these inmates, and I house the inmates, right? I have no say in it whatsoever at all. Um, we have about oh, right now, I would say with our electronic home detention clients that that are monitored out in the community, I would say we have about 220, 230 inmates. So in the back of my mind, I'm thinking if we decide to get rid of electronic home detention, and and the judges say nope these people are serving their sentences in our facility, are we going to be able to do that? And that also allows some fluctuation for, for incarcerated versus not incarcerated and things too. Anybody else? Carrie, you got, you, you're sitting there smiling at oh, me. Yeah, like I didn't you. know I'm with the microphone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> One thing I wanted to touch on was when the sheriff, I came back from the forum at Champaign that night, and I, I continued to listen to the, the bedded population as what the biggest concern it seemed like in some cases. You know, my suggestion was you eliminate a bed, you, you eliminate a pod. What could happen is, is that we build short, um, which is my concern. But then again, if it gets it passed and we're able to get all one under one roof with more programming space, with some visitation space, trying to get as much as we can for our bang, I think it's the best thing for us to do, but understand that at some point, if for some reason a new judge or something changes, we may be shipping out a county. And I just want to make sure that that's very clear. I don't want to shortchange the county, but at the same time, um, I understand if it's the only way we can get this through, then we're going to have to sit down, Dana, the architects again at the table, number 10, 10th time maybe, <laughs> and um, just discuss it and see what we can do to eliminate some of those areas that 
or wish lists of people in the community and different things in order for us to at least get something done. Um, it's not perfect, and I don't want to house out of county still, but it's something that we would have to, we just want to be honest with you on that piece because it could happen. And I, I do want to say, like, I kind of commend you guys for being so, like, flexible with us. Um, I, I do specifically remember being on tour and, you know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, one of your offices was, like, sharing with the laundromat or something like that. I mean, with, like, the wash and dryer room or something like that. So, like, that's not even on your priority list. So, like, I mean, I, I know, like, things like that can definitely impact morale with, the, with the, your staff and stuff like that. So, like, I just want to commend you guys for being flexible and, you know, just trying to make sure that the right thing is done before anything else. I was already saying, cut the admin, cut our training space, cut all that, you know, keep me where I'm at. No window. I don't need a window. <laughs> There's a lot that we could probably cut to make sure that the residents get what they need, and that can be something that can be done at another time. That's why this whole step process was so important, because we need to figure out what the main priorities are and move forward there. I have a question for the sheriff. Um, so I'm always comparing and contrasting other counties. Do you know, um, like you did any case study or any research on other county um, jails that went through sort of similar type of um, situation where they jail was mandated to be closed down? Um, and, and how did they go about it? That's only if you did it or not, or if you looked into other county jails. Uh, the only one I'm aware of that has been mandated to close down was Edgar County. Um, and they, their insurance carrier refused to even um, provide insurance to them any longer. And so um, we, he con the sheriff down there contacted us. He contacted a lot of other neighboring counties, of course. We don't have the ability to take any of his inmates. Um, so, no, I do not know. I do know that, for an example, McLean County. McLean County has, um, within the last few years, um, really, um, they, they did an addition that I talked to Sheriff Sandage a little bit about um, over the weekend. I was at a conference over the weekend, a sheriff's conference, and I talked to him a little bit about that, not necessarily about how the process was, but I know they had an emphasis on mental, mental health um, and really, really getting um, adequate facilities for mental health. Um, I do know along, along those same lines, I have spoken with, um, for an example, Sheriff Hunt over in Piatt County, um, who notoriously has an empty jail. Um, and I've said, hey, if we need to, because what I'm worried about is I'm worried that the doors are just going to open, right, one day, and we're going to have to say, sorry, we've got to close this jail. There's nothing we can do about it. That's my worst case scenario. What, where can I get these inmates at? And I think temporarily we can find a place. But like Stan said, they're going to pick and choose who they want to take, and they're not going to take any of the ones who cause us all of these, all of these issues, all of these classification issues. Um, and so I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure that's even an alternative at this point. Sorry, I can't really answer your question too well, Charles. On your, on your explanation, uh, then like and most, of, like most of the inmates at the downtown jail, they're kind of like being separated from the satellite for specific reasons, right? In one way or another, kind of. That's correct. They're not all necessarily. Uh, it's it's interesting because we gave the the president of Champaign County NAACP a, a very in depth tour the other day of the satellite facility. Um, and it opened her eyes as far as, it, it kind of opened my eyes with some of the things too, with classification. So it's not that everybody at the downtown jail is in a single cell. Um, there may be two, there may be three in a pod, for an example, um, but they're all the same classification. They're all maximum classification, and so they can't be in with everybody else, right? Um, so there are some of those, those that we have to watch um, on more, more, uh, more so a 15 minute watch, we would call it. Um, a lot of those are in our booking area. And so they have, what is it, 15 feet by 3 feet, 15 feet by 5 feet that they have to get their, their you know, one hour of rec time in, right there in booking. Um, and, and that's really our issue is that is not a place that we want those with, who, who have committed crimes that are suffering from mental illness, that is not where we want them at. That's the only place that we can adequately um, house them to the best of our abilities right now. And seeing that every day, seeing their, that diminish, is heartbreaking to tell you the truth, but they're, we're doing the best job that we can. So I know you all have, you all have toured the jail. Um, you're familiar with our problems. Um, I don't know where the disconnect is between the community and this, um, 
but there are real issues in there. And, and that's really what we need to address is what are we going to do if we have to close one day? Cause the ADA comes in and says, sorry, that little doorbell that works half the time is no longer good. Right. At the downtown jail, for an example. So. Anything else? Kyle, go ahead. Uh, the mic. He, he needs a mic. Uh, thanks for coming out, guys. I really appreciate the work that you put in. This is a very difficult task. Um, w you'd mentioned the, the right now with the EHD, it's like 220 to 230. Um, how many people are on the uh, home detention, you know? Give me just a second, and I can tell you today how many I have on there. Uh, this week we had 38, which is about 17.19% of our population. Okay. Um, and also, if you were to reduce to uh, one facility, are there any fixed costs of having two facilities that we'd see and do you, uh, savings that we'd see and do you know what that might, estimate might be? Well, I don't know an estimate. Um, so what we're doing is, uh, so laundry is in one facility and we're taking it back and forth. Um, all the food is prepared at the satellite facility and they're transporting it to the downtown jail then. Um, we see, um, and, and this is uh, this is where it kind of gets a little complicated, but, um, and I think I just lost my, my train of thought there with fixed costs. Um, oh, with, uh, with transports, right? And so a lot of people say, well, wouldn't you need to, re to reduce staff if we consolidated it into one facility? We are doing so many transports now to other places, picking up on warrants, et cetera. Um, and we're having to pay overtime for people to come in and do those transports. And so that would reduce our overtime. Uh, not necessarily directly related to one facility, but because we would have extra manpower at that point, um, potentially, right? I mean, we're adding on, so we would need to need to need to put those manpower other other places. But we would potentially be able to do some more things that we should be doing from the very beginning that we've just never had the funds to do. So, yeah, our priorities would shift, I would think. I, I guess I had a question. Um, so I, I know that the designs with the new proposals is kind of like blank squares. Do we have any idea of what the details are as far as how, how the different pods would be set up as far as separation? And um, I really don't know how that works. I mean, we do have an idea. Um, it, nothing, I believe, is down on, on paper uh, at this point in time. Uh, but it's, you know, there are standards it's safe for the industry, but there are jail standards, both for the state of Illinois, um, as well as some others that you have to follow. So um, I think we can, if, if that's something you're looking for, we can try and come up with that for you. I, also to go back to your question, um, you know, there are some uh, utilities that I believe will we'll have some savings. Yes, you know, if this goes forward, uh, you'll be adding new space to the uh, satellite jail but the utility usage at the downtown, the sheriff's office in downtown is, is an extremely inefficient building. You know, you're talking about, you know, most of the equipment in there was, was manufactured sometime in the late 70s, installed in 79 and, and 80. Um, it's, it's very inefficient. Um, old equipment, uh, you know, new high efficiency equipment uh, that's out there, you're gonna see some great savings and return on your uh, investment. Um, so I, even with adding the space that you're talking about adding, I think that you'll see some savings over utilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Kyle, the one thing I wanted to say is we did work um, a few extra hours on the way the special management housing would look, um, specifically because we knew that it couldn't be designed like any other housing unit because of the special uh, requirements for smaller housing. So I do know that was discussed in detail um, and I think that's probably available. Uh, anything else here, folks? Uh, I mean, we've uh, talked about this and talked about it, and I'm sure Dana's getting frustrated. 
He's probably going to get frustrated with me now. Uh, do we tell him to sit down with Reef Stick? Eliminating a pod with some input from the sheriff if you think you need to add a few beds to that special needs deal. Uh, look at reducing the cost in the lobby area. Uh, I mean, we, we went into this because, you know, we've been listening to the people. They, they wanted uh, the visitation, the rooms for the inmates to meet with their attorneys. Uh, I mean, if you look like James brought up, I mean, we're using storage rooms for offices, uh, but we also wanted to add the classrooms. I mean, we have the ability to have, I mean, Parkland's coming here to help with GED classes. Uh, we need to keep that and give them places to do that. Uh, I mean, anybody else in agreement with that? I mean, is that the plan you want to take? I mean, yeah, kind of, but I mean, like, I, I still would like to, I mean, Mr. Brenner said it's going to be very difficult to do, but I, I still would like to see some type of individualized pricing for these. You oh. know, like, the, I mean, that that would, that would, I think that would just really help us all out in regards to, like, just picking, you know, possibly hand-picking what all we want from this. I mean, like you, and you said, it's going to be difficult until we make some type of agreement, you know, to have a contractor come in and do that. But I think that would be greatly beneficial just to see what, not only see what we're, what we're willing to chop off, but, like, it, just have a, you know, some type of numerical estimate. Uh, we'll do the best we can coming up with a, a price list. Um, if, if, I don't know if you're going to take a vote or what you're planning on doing, but if we can set, certainly set up a meeting that's uh, convenient for the sheriff, uh, Kerry, and uh, meet with Reesec and Reed and go over these things. We can also at the same time look for things that, Thoughts that maybe they have, uh, correction staff has, uh, as well as we'll certainly ask for uh, them to be able to um, come up with a more uh, unified price list, if you will. I don't know how far down you want to go. Uh, if you want to hit it, you know, kind of the big squares, um, you know, that might be an easier way to do it. Uh, that's more of, hate to say, it, it's more of a, a function probably of square footage. Uh, based upon construction costs for the whole project, but uh, that at least gives you some 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 numerical uh, reference, uh, financial reference, so to speak. So, Steve, go ahead. Yeah, I understand the need to try and get a little bit more detailed information, but there is some information in this plan as far as what they think their costs are going to be. Um, what what I pulled out of it was it looked like reduction from that one. Uh, cell block would be close to $6 million. Looked like that was right in the ballpark there. Um, I think the issue is going to be if we want to reduce, and again, a lot of it is a function of square footage, there's going to be decisions that are going to have to be made as far as where that would come from. And I guess I'm just a little leery about stretching this too far out because, folks, we'd be looking at going to referendum in August. Is that right? Kyle, is that what August would be the deadline? So we're looking at being able to come forward to the county board with a plan, allow for board discussion, and then try and embark on being able to explain this and what it means to the community all ahead of the end of the summer. And that's pushing things pretty tightly. So if we're going to try and do, if we're going to try and do the a little bit more detailed look at costs, I would suggest if, if we're in agreement with that as a committee, then let's let's try and do that and maybe come up with specific areas that we're interested in looking at to try and maybe fine tune that so that we're asking them what do you want us to we want to give them the question this is what we'd like information about. And then let them, okay, well, we'll then give information for those areas that we want to want to seek information. I have no idea. What's an egress refuge area? <laughs> I had to ask. Okay. Currently, right now, uh, the only outdoor area that they have is outdoor rec. Well, that's still inside the confines of the building. 
if there's a uh, fire uh, for some reason, some some reason to evacuate the building, okay, we ha we have no safe area uh, to leave the building uh, to move inmates and staff and hold them temporarily until we can get them transported someplace. So that's basically a tall chain link fence on the outside of the building, away obviously from from the building. That's on the plan there. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, speaking a little bit to kind of what James is asking for, um, yeah, the, there's a breakdown um, on this page that kind of gives uh, a little bit of an idea, and so you can at least see maybe the, the, the pods specifically. Um, part of the problem that I think existed with this particular way that it was broken down was that, you know, there's numbers on the map, uh, and then there's numbers in this breakdown, and those numbers join a bunch of subnumbers, um, which if you're looking at it, it's confusing because item or, you know, estimate description here on one for new jail construction includes items two, one, three, nine, four, and five, um, which I think for when trying to explain this, and I think even when the uh, Reefstack folks were here, you know, they were saying how much more of an a la carte kind of idea this was and that, you know, all these numbers were, we were able to like take them and look at them and break them down and this is, um, but what they meant by that was these these big one through five numbers, not the one through sixteen numbers. Um, I'm not saying that uh, if you look at it pretty hard, you can figure it out. But also, like maybe if we have to break this down again, especially for ease of digestion by the public, uh, even if that was literally A through E, that would have been an easier like instead of one, which includes one, two, three, nine, and four. Like um, so whatever information that we can get that's as much broken down as possible is helpful. This is here. This is something we can look at. It's something we can tell people what specific numbers are, um, which is helpful in what has been a rollout that has been kind of hard because a lot of people don't really understand what's happening and what the process is and, and all of this. Um, so I, I think the more information that we have, the better. And I think that's been part of the problem is that that hasn't been um, as forthcoming as I would have hoped. I mean, there's been a couple times where I've even just asked for a better digital copy of of this map and can't get it. Um, and I don't know if that's because they haven't supplied it in a PDF form that um, that can be given out to us or, or, or what the case is. But that would be, then I could have been looking at this much easier than, I mean, like I think I'm happy to have this honestly because it's huge, but, uh, but, but readable. Um, and in the great Chris Storr uh, way of, yeah, I mean, like, Chris, Chris Storr would be the most, like, I'm, he's going to be sad that he's not on this committee because he doesn't get this map. His copy's still in my office. Excellent. I called him several times to come pick it um, up. As far as the, as far as how we're going to plan, I mean, there's no way to factor in what everybody on the board and everybody in the community wants easily. It's not, this is not an easy thing to digest, and what we're left with is, knowing the needs and knowing the deficiencies that currently exist, trying to plan for the future. And I mean, like, I understand the idea of saying like, well, what if tomorrow the judges decided to get rid of all electronic monitoring? I mean, it's, it's okay, that's good to put plan for that potential outcome, but like, there's multiple potential ways. I mean, then if we're considering that, then we could be considering the exact opposite happening. And for some reason we have a ton more electronic monitoring or, you know, um, and, that impetus would be then on the judges knowing that if they did that, they're going to be causing a problem with capacity issues, um, which then could then weigh in the, on their decision instead of on the back end of the sheriff having to deal with it. So, I mean, these are all things that, like, there's so many permutations. And what I've said a couple times is just not wanting to overbuild again for something that we're, that we're going to look kind of dumb down the road for having done it when we could have spent the money better. So I guess that's, I want us to be considering all of these eventualities and possibilities while we're trying to parse this down into something that actually makes sense. Because again, all of us are the ones who are supposed to be going out and telling our constituents what we've decided on and what we need. But if, I mean, like, sometimes I think we look sillier than we should because we're not, I don't think we're digesting this particularly well, personally. I, for one, would be comfortable if we went to the county board 
with a framework of what we were looking at. It would not be something that would be absolutely set in stone, but we would need to have set in stone the number of beds because people are going to ask us that question. Um, we go to referendum. If it passes, talking with Dana, we would probably be looking at a little over a year before we'd be able to do, before we'd be breaking ground at all. Um, so that would give us a period of almost, not quite two years, for us to be continuing to gather data on crime statistics, which we've just started doing, which I think may be beneficial in terms of guidance and where we move forward. Um, if the uh, pretrial reform goes through, we may have, we have the option to actually look at it and see what it's going to do and be able to maybe make some modifications so we don't end up looking quite as stupid, Mike. And uh, we'll have a new chief judge, and we may have a better idea in terms of what pretrial diversion may look like. Those are all variables that could affect ways that may, we may want to change this. We don't have that data right now, but we would likely have some of that data before we'd be breaking ground. So it's, I, don't, I don't see us going forward with something. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to build. This is what we're going to do right now. I think we need to say this is basically what we need. These are the number of beds we're looking at. And we want community support to be able to try and make these changes. Anything else? I kind of agree there with Steve but uh, about the number of beds, but uh, I'd like Dana and the sheriff and Carrie to uh, uh, study that, get back to us, because I think we need to have be pretty concrete in the plan that we're going to roll out. I mean... Then, then you can actually specify your cost, what you're asking for, I think, James, until you get a final product to, to sell. And, uh, uh, and that, that's the way I look at it. Uh, uh, but, uh, I mean, do we need to take a straw vote or take a vote on moving this forward to uh, Dana and the sheriff and Carrie on what we're asking? Or do, they, do you have enough information? I'm good. Um, you know, what Mike and Steve said was absolutely correct and probably one of the most difficult parts of this is we don't know what in the world is going to happen next year, the year after, et cetera, right? Um, I don't see our jail population going up significantly, but we don't know what's going to happen to it. Now, the other thing, and I don't want to speak for, for the uh, county executive, but the other thing is, is if the county board decided, yes, we're going to invest this much money, et cetera. <coughs> we've still got April, May, or we've still got August, September, October to, to get those finalized points so we can sell it to the voters, right? I mean, so we don't necessarily, we have to have a decision by likely the June board meeting, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the vote is in the June board meeting for the referendum, right? And so there's always time after that to, pin this down to sell, you know, to sell it, et cetera. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. But we're going to have to do something one way or another. There's going to be money invested in this uh, one way or another. It's just what does the county board want to invest it in? So. Okay, thank you, Dust. I think that's right. Uh, I, I hope we get close to a concrete plan. And, uh, I mean, we've discussed uh, in conversations about hiring a consultant to educate when we come to a plan to educate before an election. Uh, as I've said before, there's two different factors here. I mean, that, that's why I've always asked Kyle or like Mike, what, where are we at on justice, social services? I mean, for me in the rural areas, a whole different concept than what we're looking at here. I mean, there, there's going to be two selling points here, and that has to be, uh, we need to be able to sell it to uh, everybody in this county. And, uh, but we, we know there's a need. We know we have a problem. We have a liability issue if we don't do anything. And uh, we, we've got to sit down here and come up with something. I mean, I think this county's done a good job, and Dustin and everybody, that we're not putting people in jail that we don't have to. I think that's been proven. I don't think you have very few in there that don't need to be in there. We've talked about it before. But uh, um, to me... I think we move get move forward. Dust or uh, Dana's heard our ideas. Uh, 
I'm sure they'll be having conversations and uh, he'll be writing my name on the bathroom wall because he's mad at me for doing this again. So, <laughs> but anyway, is that the way you want to leave it? Kyle, I mean, you got any, I mean, it, it, you got a lot of people that you, we're going to have to sway. I, I guess I'm kind of confused. What's the question? Because it's, it's a modified version, but what is the specifics of what we're, or I said you all are. Yeah. Well, I, Steve, I'll let Steve help on this. Eliminate 154 cell pod. Dustin may think if we do that, he says he may need a few more beds in that special needs area. Uh, you know, I, I made the suggestion, I mean, okay, 54, do you make the 154 pod just a little bit bigger? I, I mean, that's, I have no idea. That's, you people that know what your needs are. But, uh, you know, I think if we could trim six, eight million dollars off this project, it'd uh, be a lot easier to sell. I don't know what you think, Steve. I think there's going to need to be some reduction in order to get community support. Um, as far as additional information that you're talking about, James, and I'm hearing you echo Mike, I think it would be very helpful if both of you guys would communicate with Dana in terms of what specifically you're looking at, because I don't want to leave him out just, okay, where do I, where do I move forward on it? So give him, give him some specifics, any, and any, any committee member, if you have additional specific information you want about cost points, let him know so that he can can ask those questions and get that information back to you. I, I, I don't want to leave him hanging with a uh, not clear charge as far as what he's supposed to be doing. I'll also say, um, you know, when we take this again to a discussion with the full board or something like that, you know, one, one thing that might be helpful as far as explaining to people, um, you know, and I tried to mention this at, at, our, at our city hall thing too, um, is that regardless of how much good we can do when it comes to pretrial, when it comes to, um, you know, all the, you know, cash bail uh, dissolution and things like that, I mean, there's there's still going to be a specific set of, of people that is it is in the, the better interest of the public if they are not let out. Um, and that would be, I mean, even if you looked at recent news, if we're talking about like, you know, a Brent Christensen, you know, somebody that like literally there, would be, you would not find a person in town that would say, let him out. Um, and so maybe when you're making some sort of presentation about this, I don't know how detailed you would want to get, but discussing if you reduced, I mean, you don't want anybody in there that's, if we're, if we're talking about like anybody who's gone through the process of getting picked up with driving for suspended and then stuck in jail based on bail amount or things like that. But if we're talking about people, if you if you come with a specific set of this amount of gun violence, or this, you know, I've got two people that are waiting on a murder trial, things like that, um, those are more permeable, substantive data sets that I think people understand better when we're trying to talk about this. Want to lower the amount of people that are in there that shouldn't be, because that happens still regularly in this country and in this community, but. When you reduce every bit of that, there's still going to be a set of people that you can list and you can say, charge-wise, who's there, who you are tasked with keeping, and why you need to be able to better perform that, that, that particular job. I think that would be helpful, at least when I've discussed it with people who are saying, we should just get rid of the jail entirely, which is a, a mindset. Um, but if you say... Okay, well, what about a Brent Christensen? It turns the conversation a little bit to general safety of everybody in the community. That might be helpful in helping people understand why there are things that need to still happen. I actually did that, and I gave it to the entire county board. Um, that snapshot of the people who were in my custody on that particular day, it's very difficult. Um, data wise to be as specific as that for a whole year because there's multiple charges and one person may have you know several things etc um, and I'm about to put out an annual report as well and um, and that will have that in there um, 
you know, looking at that, there there are definitely things that jail or you know that that uh, bail reform will will get out of the jail. There's there's no doubt, um, but it's a minority of of offenses that are in there at this point. Uh, not knowing what that reform is going to be, right? What the what the uh, what the standard is going to be, et cetera. But yeah, I mean, I've I've provided that to the county board via email and mentioned it in pro public county board meetings and things like that as well. So. I think I just meant. Uh, slightly more detailed than I feel like we've gotten in the past. Um, so, and maybe that's not possible, but for for me, um, the more specific I've gotten about that, the more people's uh, perceptions seem to have shifted at least a little bit. Uh, real quick, Stan, I'm sorry. So what exactly are you looking for because in, in, in the snapshot I gave to the county board was every single inmate in my custody and every single charge that inmate was was charged with and felony versus misdemeanor, et cetera. So if I, if I know more about what you're looking for, I may be able to break it down more, but I'm not sure how much more I can break it down than that. Yeah, I, I, think, I, th I think what you're... I could be misremembering, which is obviously very possible, um, and I'll take that hit. Um, I don't remember there being that detailed of a breakdown um, when it came, came to specific charges, um, like over the microphone, and maybe that's incorrect. Oh, no, it was not over the microphone. It yeah. was, um, we we had mentioned, and then I sent it out to the entire county board like the day after or two days after. Yeah, so that I'm remembering, and that I think is great um, for us to have that data, and we can try to parse it out to people as, as, as much as possible, but, you know, some people only pay attention to very specific things, and, mm -hmm. and having that almost not as a sound bite, but as like a thing that people can like listen to and digest is sometimes a little, in my experience, a little bit different. Because even if you say, like, here's all the data, and you push it towards people, they go, yeah, great, and they glance at it. But, like, there's hearing it sometimes, I think, is and, – and, again, this is hard. Like, I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying, like, read every single one, but, like, when you very specifically say, like, this person's in here for this specific – you know, like, these specific crimes, uh, that, I think, is a – it's more of a visceral change. Okay. Anything else? You know, any other business? Uh, I have no report. Next meeting is March 3rd. <coughs> Designations items be placed on consent agenda. Uh, do you want the approval of the uh, video system to go straight forward? Or do you want it uh, just presented to the board? Anybody want to pull it from consent? All right. Item uh, 6A will go on to consent. If nothing else, we will adjourn at 730.